Welcome to this introduction to ICD-11 coding. I'm Dr. Islam Ibrahim from the National Center for Health Information. The biggest difference between ICD-10 and ICD-11 from coders' perspective is the way we search for the code. So ICD-10 was based on books. First, we looked up the lead term in the alphabetical index. Then we moved on to the other book, which is the tabular list to find the code. ICD-11 is fully electronic. It's based on using the ICD-11 coding tool. This is like a search engine where you type in your diagnosis or the condition you're looking for, and then look among the displayed options to select the one you want. Let's start our ICD-11 journey. Type in ICD-11 into your Google search box, and then select the coding tool. This is the ICD-11 coding tool. All we need to do is type in the diagnosis or condition we're looking for into the search box. Let's go dermatitis. Type it into your search box. ICD-11 gives you a set of search results that include the term you typed. Check these results for the condition you want. If ICD-11 finds an exact match to the term you typed, it will be highlighted in blue. Because this is the condition we want, we'll click it. You can see the ICD-11 code appears up there. Before we move on, here's an important note. ICD-11 includes two types of codes, stem codes and extension codes. Stem codes are the core diagnostic codes to which more detail can be added using extension codes or other stem codes. They are organized in 26 chapters that follow the traditional pattern of ICD. They can be used alone for coding and they start with a number or a letter except the letter X. Extension codes are a new feature in ICD-11. They are used to add extra detail to stem codes. You can add one or more extension codes to a single stem code. They can add details like right or left, like a specific anatomy or a specific substance or chemical that has caused toxicity. It can also refer to discharge diagnosis types, diagnosis timing, and so on. It always starts with the letter X and it cannot be used alone for coding. Two or more ICD-11 codes can be combined to give a cluster. This cluster can be made of two stem codes together or adding extension codes to stem codes. In ICD-11 terminology, this is called post-coordination. So post-coordination is the way ICD-11 gives us the chance to add detail to a diagnosis whether by adding an extra stem code to the original stem code we selected or one or more extension codes to the original stem code. In a cluster, stem codes always come first. Extension codes are never positioned first in a cluster. ICD-11 uses two symbols to form clusters, the slash and the and. Like we said, there can be two forms of clusters. A cluster made of stem codes together and a cluster made of stem codes with extension codes. The slash is used to connect two stem codes in a cluster and the AND is placed between a stem code and the following extension code. ICD-11 will do that automatically. You don't have to worry about it and you will not need to select a certain symbol. ICD-11 will do it on its own. Let's see how post-coordination works. You want to code diabetic cataract. Type it into your ICD-11 coding tool and we get the search result. It's highlighted in blue because it's an exact match to what we typed into the coding tool. But be careful, we're not done yet. Always check the plus sign. A red plus means post-coordination is mandatory. A gray plus means it's optional. In this case, it's red, which means we have to post-coordinate. To do that, click here. More information appears about this entity, like a brief description. Any coding notes? In this case, it says always assign an additional code for diabetes. And under post coordination, it says mandatory post coordination. Now click the blue link to open the browser. We can now see the entity diabetic cataract in the browser. And we can also see where it lies in the hierarchy. 
Notice the code also note, which means we must also code the causing condition for the diabetic cataract. Let's suppose it was type 2 diabetes. Here it's obvious because it's already on the list. All we have to do is click it. But what if it was something like another specified type of diabetes, like the ones under 5A13, where we can see the small arrow? In this case, you can either click the arrow to view the sublists, or you can use the search box. But here, type 2 is already on the list, so all we have to do is click it. The code for the causing condition appears right there. And we can also see the cluster up in the orange bar. Here we have a cluster of two stem codes with a slash between them. We didn't select the slash, ICD-11 did that automatically. All you have to do is click on the entities you want. ICD-11 will form the cluster on its own. ICD-11 is getting smarter and smarter. What if we had just typed in the full diagnosis into the ICD-11 coding tool? We actually get a search result. ICD-11 has already done the post-coordination for us. It has saved us the time we would take to add the post-coordination ourselves. Well, what should I do if I don't get search results? Let's suppose we looked up peptic ulcer with upper GI bleeding. Mm, it says, couldn't find matching words, couldn't find matching entities. ICD-11 did not find what we're looking for. First, ICD-11 gives us the chance to try flexible search. So when you don't get search results, use the try flexible search option to help you find search results that are very similar to the one you typed, but not an exact match. If you still get no results, try breaking down what you're looking for by removing extra details. For instance, we can look up only peptic ulcer. And then, once we get the results, we can use post-coordination to add extra detail to add the upper GI bleeding. Here's a summary of the ICD-11 search strategy. First, start by typing in the search terms into the coding tool. A good idea would be to type in the full diagnosis. Like we just saw together, ICD-11 sometimes can create the cluster for you without you having to do some extra steps. If you find what you're looking for, perfect, then click it. Then check for the plus sign. If there is none, you're done. If there is, well, what color is it? If it's red, you must post-coordinate. If it's gray, Post-coordination is optional. If you don't find what you're looking for, try the flexible search. If you find what you look for, great, click it. If you don't, try breaking down your search terms by removing extra detail. Now here's a little quick note. When ICD-11 finds you the cluster automatically, you may not need to click the red plus because when you do, you'll find that ICD-11 has already selected the post-coordination for you. Thank you for watching.